Hi, today I'm going to talk about how to use AI to generate original artwork that you can then cut and engrave on your laser cutter. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And recently I had a spot on my kitchen wall that I, I wanted to put something in and, and the shape of what I needed to put in that spot was this this kind of elongated rectangle. And I thought, well, what would look good on that? Maybe two squares that look like ceramic tile, but of course they're not. They're actually uh, cut and engraved in wood. Um, and I would like stained glass flowers as the motif. And because uh, I thought that would go well with my kitchen. And normally what I would have done is I would have gone to the internet and done a search for reference images of stained glass flowers and I would have drawn my own design. But in this case I decided to use Dall E, which is the image generating AI tool created by OpenAI. So you've probably heard a lot about AI recently and, and most often what you hear about is ChatGPT. That's also a tool created by OpenAI, but it is a text generating tool. DALI is an image generating tool. And the name is a play on words. It's a combination of, of Salvador Dali and Wally -E, the, ro the robot in the Disney film. So um, I joined a beta for uh, DALI about six months ago. And they gave you 50 free credits to play around with. And I did, and I was very impressed at the time. And I thought it would really be able to do this project. And I'm thrilled with, with my results. So um, how do you use Dolly? Well, you can get a free ac account. At least it's free at the time I'm making this video. But, and you get 15 free credits a month. But you can buy all the credits you want, and they're very inexpensive. It's like currently it's $15, gets you 115 credits. So that's 13 cents a credit. So what does a credit get you? Well. A credit, you put in a text-based request called a prompt, and it generates four images that it thinks is a good response to that request. So four images for 13 cents is a pretty good deal. And, uh, and then you don't really get exactly what you're looking for the first time. What you really find is that you have to help Dolly iterate towards the result you're looking for. And you do that by constantly refining the text prompt. And also by taking one of the four images it gives you and using that as the new starting point to do the next iteration. So the combination of those two activities will steer it towards the result you're looking for. So in this example, I probably started with something like, give me stained glass windows of flowers. And then I would say, okay, give me round stained glass windows with flowers. And then maybe I said, give me round stained glass windows with a white background showing flowers. And then it is also very important that when it, it gives you these four options, if one is close to what you're looking for, that you take that and use that as your new starting point. So I was really happy with these uh, images. It gave me these two, it also gave me two others. Remember, it gives you four every time. And I'll show you the other two, and I was equally happy with those. I could have used any of the four for this project. But then I had to take those images, which are color, and, and take them into Photoshop, which is my what I use for image processing, and turn it into a nice, clean, black and white image that you can then do an image trace on and use it to guide the engraving on your laser cutter. And so I'm going to show you not only the process of using DALI, e, but I'll show you how I um, cleaned up those images in Photoshop. And then cut and engraved not only the tile you see here, but of course the backing as well. And uh, to give it some depth, and there's a hanger here in the top. And then I hand painted it and uh, put a thick triple glaze uh, clear coat on the, them. They really do look like tile. They're very reflective. And I love the final result. So I'll show you how I did all of that in this episode. 
Dali retains a history of everything you do, and let's look at the process I went through to get to my images. So I asked for a single square stained glass image of first flowers, then paisley. I like paisley. And then a uh, stained glass image of paisley flowers, just to see what it would do with that. But that wasn't very recognizable as a flower. So then I asked for a paisley and a rose. And now I'm starting to get these pink images that are getting closer to what I want to see. I also experimented to see if I could go straight to the black and white image and not have to do it through Photoshop processing. So I asked for black and white images of flowers with thick black lines. But then I decided the color was actually valuable because I was going to have to paint this and I wanted guidance on how to paint it. So I went back to this one image that had popped up uh, a little while ago and said, give me variations on that image. And each time it gave me four pictures and I would pick out my favorite of the four and say, okay, give me variations on that. And I finally ended up here with what I thought was an excellent set of pictures. So now let's do a live session. And I'm going to start with the exact prompt that gave me the picture that I started doing variations of. And Dolly never gives you the same thing twice. You put the same prompt in, you'll get different images. So this is today's response to a circular stained glass image of a flower with thick black lines. And I look at this and I kind of like this one here on the left. So I'll pick it and I'll ask for variations on it. Now every time you do this, it takes about eight seconds for it to generate a new set of images. So these are pretty nice, but let's start um, playing around with the prompt itself. It's got an underline on stained glass here. It doesn't like something about that. When you hover over it, it, it suggests that it would be better if you had a hyphen in between stained glass. So I'm going to see what kind of a difference that makes. And actually it gives me simpler images, but much more abstract than the ones that we were seeing. This is not really an improvement in my opinion, but let's just continue to play around. I want to see if I can steer it towards the pictures I actually used in my project. So I'm going to put in the colors red, green, and orange, uh, which I had, and a tropical flower. So these four are definitely responsive to that prompt, but the flower that it's generating is not really very pretty in my mind. So I'm going to try, instead of tropical, I'm going to say a rose and see what I get now. Okay, the, these are better. I've got some more interesting flowers here. Um, I need to, I'm going to pick one of these and use it to uh, edit from there. And I like they've put yellow in, some white. I also, this one's also got some blue in it. It's more interesting. Let's look at variations on that. You'll notice on the right, there's a running list of all of the images we've generated. So I'm going to pick one of these and, and work with it as the end of this little demonstration. I like this one here on the right, and I want to point out how it's always cutting off edges of the circle. I think it thinks that's more artistic, and maybe it is, but it doesn't fit my need for my application here. So there's this new beta uh, version of editing of an image where you can just say, okay, I'm going to give you some blank space here on this side of the image and go ahead and improvise and fill in what you think should be there. And what it does is it actually fills in exactly what you would expect to be there. The circle is also a little cut off here on the bottom, so I'm going to do the same thing down there and, and get that last little bit filled in. This wasn't available when I did my pictures and I had to do all this uh, fixing of the circle manually. When you get a picture you are happy with, you can download a copy of that and you, it's available for you to use then on the next step of the process. And that next step is to turn this nice color image into a black and white image. I'm sure there are many ways to do this, but this is the way I do it. 
I select by color and I use the dropper to pick up the black line and you can see over here in this window what it thinks is selected. Then I can just use that selection or I can modify it somewhat by going in and there are different things you can do. You can smooth it, you can grow it or shrink it. I'm going to make these a little bit bigger by expanding it by two pixels on each side. This will give me really thick black lines. Then I say within this selection, I want to put in a new fill layer and I'm going to make it a color and the color I'm going to pick here is black. So I make it black and say, okay. And now I know that all of that is pure black. And so now I'm going to select again and select by color and I'm going to pick the black but then I'm going to invert it. That's going to give me everything but the black. And I'm going to take that selection and I'm going to add a new fill layer and that fill layer is going to be pure white. By going through this process, I really eliminate all shades of gray in the image. You can see now in my final black and white version that these thin lines in the middle of the flower are not complete lines, but that's going to be okay for what I want to do for engraving in the next step. So I export that image and I now move into Illustrator and I'm going to place that image in the square I've drawn, which is the size of the tile that I want to make. Holding the shift key, I reduce it down. That makes sure that you keep that aspect ratio. You keep it perfectly square. And I go to my image trace window. Now, if this isn't up, you can just go into the window menu and make sure that you turn it on because you need all of the advanced capabilities here. You need to open up this advanced settings and check ignore white because if you don't check that, you're going to get double lines in this next step. I turn on outlines in the preview. That's those blue lines. If it looks good, you say expand and it turns your image into vector graphics. Now you could, if you wanted to, turn those outlines into blue lines and turn off the fill and you could vector engrave that with lines or you can do what I'm going to do, which is to leave it all black. A black fill gives you raster engraving. So now I'm going to actually lay these out. I have my cut lines for my tiles. I have the two different images and I export these uh, as SVGs so I can use them in Lightburn. I also have my top of the actual piece and I can see how these two images are going to be placed. But I turn them off and I just have engraving lines for those squares and I can use those to place the tiles on the board. As for the back layers, I opted to split them in this way so that I would waste less board uh, for cutting these. When I import these into Lightburn and I check to see that they're going to raster engrave the way I expect them to, uh, and you can see the path that the laser head's going to take, and it's going to take me about 22 minutes to engrave each one of these. When I pull in the top, I I go through my basic checks, which are to make sure that the dimensions are what I think they are. I always have to ask Alexa um, what this many millimeters are in inches. That's kind of my reality check. And these blue placement lines are going to be very important when I actually glue this together. I did the two tiles in Baltic birch plywood, uh, my experience with painting that is uh, that it's better than the MDF, but I'm going to use MDF for the back. So here I am raster engraving the two tile and cutting them out. You can see how thick these lines are now because I did that expansion of the lines in the image trace process. It's giving me this bold graphic look that I really wanted in the pieces. I talk about painting in several of my other videos and th this is what it looks like when you just have the first coat on the base coat. Base coats are the darkest version of the color. They are about coverage of the wood and it's very flat and uninteresting. 
there are two to three layers of layer paints that go over this, and that's what really makes it come to life. But I had hoped the engraving would be dark enough that I wouldn't need to paint it, and this is when I realized that was not the case. So I used this specialty paint that's designed for going into the crevices of miniatures to make them darker. It's as thin as water, and you can use a brush to kind of drop it into those engraved lines. But painting takes a long time, and I really had the opportunity to think about these images Dolly had generated. Details like these grooves in the bamboo, or the fact that the cross of bamboo is one color of green and this other one is a different color of green. How does it decide that here's the highlight in the center of the flower, or that three of the petals should be pink and the other three should be orange and red? And I was really intrigued by this background panel here in that where it's not just white, it's white and gray, and it's on both sides. I mean, it's really amazing. Here's my final result. I, I used my layer paints to try to replicate the color changes in the flower petals. There's highlights on the center of the bamboo, on the leaves. I even did the gray and white in the background there. And then I sprayed on two to three coats of this triple thick glaze to really make them look like tile. And you can see the really nice reflection I'm getting off of that. During the painting phase, I also worked in the shop to glue together the frame so it be, would be ready to go when the tiles were finished. I also painted the edge of the top with a dark brown. And I glued the tiles on one at a time because it's, they are very slippery when you try to glue this together. And you have to make sure that when you put those weights on it, you're not weighting it down in the wrong position. And this is my final result. And, and I have to tell you, <laughs> I was really excited. This whole thing transformed when that glaze went on. It was The painting was kind of flat and uninteresting until I glazed it. And then, then it was just amazing. It fits perfectly in the spot in the kitchen it was designed for. It, it goes very well with the rug in the kitchen that I wanted it to match. That's really the magic of being able to design your own things and to make them on your laser cutter. I have lots of other great projects in process right now. If you're interested in seeing them, please subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications.